Okay guys, what's up? So I'm gonna be talking about ICOs. What is it and is it a scam? So what is an ICO? Well, an ICO stands for this, Initial Coin Offering. You see, an ICO is similar to an IPO, which is Initial Public Offering, but a little bit different. I actually consider an ICO a merger between like a Kickstarter model and the IP, IPO model coming together. So Kickstarter model is like this. I have this drone idea and I wanna build a drone in China. So I pre-sell my drone for like 600 bucks. I crowd sale the money all around the world and then I got money for my drone. With the ICO, it's like that, but you're not actually selling a physical product. You are giving away, you're not giving away, but you're offering either a cryptocurrency or a token that represents the underlying protocol of your new blockchain startup. But the difference between the IPO though is this isn't on a stock exchange. This isn't, this isn't run by securities and commissions, which I'll be getting into a second. So to summarize, an ICO is a blockchain company that is offering its cryptocurrency or token to the general public around the world in exchange for other tokens or other cryptocurrencies. The most classical example or one of the most successful ICOs that kind of kicked this off was Ethereum. So about a couple of years ago, Vitalik uh, created a white paper and they did their own ICO, which is said, hey guys, we are offering this Ether cryptocurrency in exchange for Bitcoin. So people all around the world that had Bitcoin, they sent in their Bitcoin, they bought a bunch of Ether and that's how they supported Ether and that's how Ether started. They offered their own cryptocurrency. That's what it, ICOs in general. It's a new form of crowdfunding a startup but much greater than that because the cryptocurrency or the token that represents that new blockchain startup is actually part of the initial protocol. So in, in Ethereum, you need Ether to run the Ethereum protocol. Without Ether, it collapses. Hence why many ICOs that don't have this type of protocol or don't actually need their token or crypto to be, part, to be necessary part of their startup, in my mind, uh, I won't touch them, tell you the truth. So I'll just keep it at that, okay? So that, that's what an ICO is in a nutshell. I'll give you some other examples of successful ICOs. You got Augur, you got Golem, uh, you got Blockchain Capital, you got Singular DTV, then you got Economy. Those are other ones. You can go check them out yourself, okay? But there are some difficulties with ICOs. I'll tell you some difficulties. So number one is this. First of all, and I'm gonna be getting into what do you look out for ICOs, so just uh, if you keep on watching the video there are some difficulties with ICOs. The first difficulty is this, depending on what the ICO is offering, whether it's own cryptocurrency or token, there are a difference between those two. So either, or whether they're offering a crypto or a token, the actual storage of that new crypto or token is difficult because most wallets or exchanges, which I don't recommend you keep your money on, so most wallets and exchanges don't offer support for that new crypto. So a bunch of these ICOs sometimes give you this weird convoluted method to store their crypto and, and tell you the truth, it's quite complicated. I myself have lost a bunch of tokens, I would say, due to the fact of trying to store it because it just, it's horrible. So that's something to keep in mind, the actual storage of crypto, of the token into a new ICO is not the greatest. Next one I wanna focus on with ICOs are legalities. So for example, with Ethereum, uh, it moved from Toronto to Switzerland. A lot of these ICOs, remember, they are not considered securities yet. They're not regulated yet. And so the issue is a lot of the securities commissions, whether the SEC, they're viewing it as a, a, as a liability. So most of these new ICOs are either going to Switzerland, Singapore, Hong Kong, and some other places around the world. So keep that in mind too, is whether it's you, the, you wanna start your own ICO or startup, or whether it's your investing one, keep in mind is where are they uh, legally registered because not, you know most of these ICOs are actually going from a crypto to fiat to pay for the development of the new startup they invested in. So finally, moving into the important part of the video is should you invest in ICOs? I'm gonna say this here. I'm not gonna tell you what to invest in. I'm not gonna give you any of my picks. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a trader. I don't trade. I don't like trading. I don't have time to trade. I'm, a, I'm the Warren Buffett model. I'm long-term investing. S set it, forget it, park it, okay? I'm gonna give you underlying fundamental principles uh, when investing in anything. And this applies to ICOs and startups and stocks, etc. This is what I look for, okay? I have a system of five points. Number one, I look for a strong leader. Without a leader, nothing's gonna get done. If we look at Ethereum, Vitalik's a strong leader. If we look at Bitcoin, even though it's a, a mythical leader, there's still Satoshi. If we look at successful brands such as uh, Tesla, we got Elon Musk. Amazon, we got Jeff Bezos. Alibaba, we have Jack Ma. There has to be a leader 
that's the glue, that's the visionary, that holds everybody together, that people can look out up to, and also for the leader to do PR. The leader needs to go around the world, talk about a startup, create the community around him, which leads me to my second point. It needs a strong team behind that. So without the team, the leader is nothing. And you need a strong dev team, a strong marketing team, a strong biz dev team. And what's really important beyond the fact you have different cogs of teams is the chemistry among the teams. So when I'm looking at whether it's a startup or a new ICO, I want to interview the team. I want to interview the leader. I want to see how they function together. I want to see the history of them. I want to know what they did in the past. I want to know what their failures were. I want to know what kind of human being they are. Remember, do not invest in technology, invest in human beings. Next, the community. And what I mean by community, I'm talking about the all encompassing community around the world. What type of community are they nurturing or creating? Are they creating uh, a forward thinking, open, positive community that promotes development, that promotes growth, or the more closed ma minded, maximalist community? So it's really important that this new ICO or this blockchain startup is nurturing a positive community that does good around the world, that promotes openness and that promotes the, f the, the future awareness of this new technology and this new uh, solution to the problem that they're solving. Next, are they solving a specific problem? Too many times I've read a million white papers, I've seen a bunch of blockchain startups and ICOs, my mind explodes, I have no idea what they're doing, I have no idea what problem they're solving. It's almost like I'm reading Mandarin or something or some Martian language, it's like, if you can't explain to me in one sentence or in an elevator exactly the problem you're solving, you will fail, period. Because when it comes down to marketing, if you can't explain that to a regular person, or as Einstein states, if you can't explain it to an eight-year-old, you're not a good teacher. It's really imperative that no matter what blockchain startup you start, that you can distill and dilute exactly what you're solving in one sentence. Just keep that in mind. And uh, next one is timing a market. So this is something that you can't control. I've seen many great startups, uh, many great teams, many great uh, people who are great leaders, unfortunately the timing of their technology and idea is not yet ready or acceptable by the marketplace. So timing something we can't control and it's hard to actually validate and sometimes consider the X factor, the lucky factors. Uh, you know, a lot of people consider themselves lucky because if they even came out two years later or earlier, they would have failed. So timing is key. And finally, I'll leave you with this, the tech, which honestly, I'm not that big on the tech. I'm not really focusing on the tech because I'm not investing in the tech. I'm not investing in like the nodes. I'm investing in the human being, the core developers, the community, the leadership. Uh, I'm investing in the idea behind it, not the technology. Too many people put emphasis and weight and power on the technology. Technology is not gonna grow by itself. So that's the last thing I invest in. So there's my video for ICOs. I think if I have to summarize, an ICO is an excellent new opportunity for startups around the world to create cash flow for their business to pay for the development and also to add value back to their investors because with ICOs with tokens and cryptos it becomes liquid so they can exchange it on the exchanges and actually add value and uh, use it for other utilities but I do want to state there are many scam ICOs out there I won't name the scam ICOs out there so I say be be aware and what you learn today are the fundamentals forget about all this other stuff of trying to jump around the boat looking for one, per, one cent ICOs to the next 1,000 ICOs. If you follow these fundamentals and all top VCs, all great investors, they follow this principle is what I just told you. Strong leader, strong team together, strong community, solving a specific problem that it's really easy for somebody to understand, timing in the market, and finally, lastly, tech. There you have it. What is an ICO or initial coin offering? Scam or no scam? It's a little bit of both. If you enjoyed this video, like always, leave a comment below this video. I wanna know uh, what your strategy is for investing in ICOs. And finally, if you want me to do another video, leave a suggestion below and I'll make sure I get to it. Have a great day, guys. Peace.